Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger, and we need to talk about Grip versus Drift yet again. Let's go! Real quick before I get into the video, if you're an aspiring content creator and you wanna learn from my experience, I'm teaching how to build a gaming YouTube channel over on Caliber Gaming. It's a new YouTube channel, it's my second channel, and you can find the link in the description if you wanna learn something. This is just all the things that I've learned over the last three or four years building this YouTube channel. So go over there, subscribe if you're interested. Keep in mind, I don't have any content on there right now. I'm in the process of filming and editing everything. All right, let's get into it. So. The build meta in Need for Speed Unbound has been dominated by gripping thus far, but hopefully you caught this video that I did not too long ago where I talked about the build meta changing to a more slippy meta because players skill levels are still on the rise. I was mostly making educated guesses and I was right to a degree, but I wrote that video before I met this player named Koiz or Q for short. Q never really liked the grip meta and has been racing with drift builds since the launch of the game game, and he was able to open my eye to something absolutely groundbreaking in Need for Speed Unbound. Drifting is viable. Not only is it viable, it could be the new meta going forward. Alright, I don't want to jump too far ahead of myself here, there aren't very many players using drift builds at the moment, and most players who are using it are doing so because they prefer it, not because they're able to drive faster. But Q is driving faster with drift builds. He's setting insane records like 215 on Smoke Show with a drifty 180SX, 155 on Blue Collar with a drift build F40, and 116 on Shopping Spree with a drift build RSR. Just pay attention to your times on those races the next time you run them. Make sure you're laying down when you see your own time though, because you will fall out of your chair. The question is, why is he able to go faster without taking advantage of the grip meta? What in the game's mechanics is rewarding him with higher speeds? Well, I thought we might take a look at an example to figure this out and maybe shed some light on the drift versus grip situation. So. Let's go to this run he did on Smoke Show because it has his controller overlay so we can see exactly what he's doing. So through these first few turns, you're gonna notice he's doing basically the same thing you would do with a grip build, and that's using Burst NOS to take the corners. This will allow you to tighten your turning radius, and usually it rewards you with a grip NOS when you come out of the turn. The difference for him is that he doesn't have to wait until his car straightens out before using more burst, because the drifting mechanic rewards that burst that is usable instantly. Alright, let's keep going, and pause it right here at 1702. This is where it gets interesting. So he's taking this corner with one bar of burst already in the bank. He pops it to take the corner, and you can see the car go into a full drift. It's even rewarding him drift NOS as you can see below the speedometer. But notice, he hasn't let go of the NOS button through this turn, and this is where it gets super weird. At 1940, he is rewarded with almost two bars of grip burst NOS. Didn't we just see him drift that turn? It's weird, right? Well, the game is actually giving him a double dip of NOS for bursting through that corner. It's registering like he gripped it. This is basically the exact same mechanic that allows grip builds to get both drift and grip NOS rewards when they micro drift. Now he's able to use that free two burst that he got to do the exact same thing on the ensuing corner. Let's see it. Yup, drift entry, burst through the apex, continue to hold down the NOS button and finish the turn and get your double dip two bars of grip NOS. Then you probably guessed it, he uses that same thing to do the same thing on the next corner. Now by doing this, he's able to keep an insane amount of speed through a crazy section of this race. But now let's take a look at how this compares to one of the fastest racers on the planet, Waterblob, who has a grip build. If we put these videos side by side and slow them down, you can see the differences in speed through each section of this race. If we pause it right here at the last gate for the lap, you'll notice that both Blob and Q start the second lap at about the same time, the 45 second mark. Q's current speed for that corner is 175 miles per hour, and Blob's is 269 kilometers per hour, which converted is 167. So you've got 
175 for Q, and 167 for Blop. It's a pretty big speed difference for that corner. And that speed difference is actually everything. It just continues throughout that first section of this lap. But one of the biggest differences in these runs is that Q uses the NOS that is generated on every corner. Whereas Blob is deciding to generate a full three bars to use on the turn that's after the small parking lot. When they're going across the dirt, Q has a speed of 165 miles per hour, where Blob is actually at 132 miles per hour. Again, that's a huge difference and it just seems to be getting bigger. Now to be clear, I'm not disparaging Water Blob here. His time on this race is 2 minutes and 20 seconds, which is absolutely insane. I tried this for hours with this exact same build on this exact same track, and I could only manage a 2 minute and 36 second time, so hats off to both of these guys. I just wanted something to compare the drifting versus the gripping, and these two guys are insanely fast at what they do. What's really crazy though is to the untrained eye, these runs look really, really similar. They're both generating a crazy amount of burst NOS, and they both are flying on this race, but I started wondering how much gold NOS is actually being generated and used by each of these methods of driving. So I counted the bars. Q generates and uses 44 bars of burst NOS. And in the process, he generated six full three bar bursts. And Water Blob actually generates and uses 46 bars of burst, in which 10 of those were full three bar bursts. Q is generating less bars of burst and he's using less full three bar bursts. So if I haven't confused you by this point in the video, then you're actually a wizard. I know this doesn't make sense, but hopefully what I'm about to say explains it. This track is fairly tight. You have multiple corners back to back very quickly. There aren't very long straight sections. So let me ask you, think back to Need for Speed Heat, where you had the options of one large NOS bottle or five little ones. In a race like this, which is the better choice? Obviously, the five little ones, right? Well, that's exactly what's at play here with these two examples. Water Blob is taking time to generate full three bar bursts, while Q is using every short burst that comes his way in specific spots on the track to facilitate his drift build, which is a faster way to drive this particular track with this particular car. And that's really what I wanted to talk about with this video. Gripping definitely has the attention of builders, and for good reason. Obviously, it generates much more burst NOS, and to be honest, it's easier to drive. So why wouldn't we all go after it? But the truth is, drift builds are very viable when the driver knows how to handle the car correctly. I also think that drift builds in Unbound are going to depend heavily on the track and the car. Some cars are not too friendly with drifting, and some races don't have a bunch of turns in them making it really hard to generate burst NOS with the drift build. I think each race in this game might have its own meta, which is actually super interesting to see. Anyways, the point of all of this was to just alarm you to start playing around with drift builds. Go experiment and try to drive like Q does. Who knows, maybe you're faster that way. And that's what a racing game is all about anyways, going faster. All right, hopefully I've opened your eyes to something here. That's all I was trying to do. I don't think drifting is faster all the time and I don't think gripping is faster all the time. I think there's a mixture. And hopefully this has inspired some of you to go out and try some drift builds. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the Heat 5 members of the channel. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.